Hey, in this lesson, we're going to look at the graphs of tangent and cotangent. And uh, I'm going to teach this in a way I've actually never taught this before. Uh, if you are an outsider, uh, as in not one of my students, and you just happen to find this on YouTube and you're hoping to find some help, uh, this will help you. But uh, after you see this, if it makes sense, go to your teacher and see if they're, uh, he or she is okay with you using this technique. Because I'm, it's probably going to be different than any other way you've ever seen this being graphed. But I think it's going to make it a little bit easier. Uh, than your typical techniques for graphing tangent and cotangent. <coughs> um, the thing you do need to remember for tangent and cotangent is that uh, tangent is sine over cosine. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm overcoming a cold here, so I may be hacking a little bit. Um, tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. And you need to remember those identities. Um, uh, because when we think about tangent, when we're graphing tangent, I'm going to rewrite tangent or think of it in terms of sine over cosine. And if you remember, if you have any rational function where you have variables in the denominator, if your denominator ever equals zero, then you will have a vertical asymptote. So when I'm going to graph tangent, I'm actually going to start by graphing cosine as kind of a foundation graph. And everywhere cosine equals zero or where cosine has an x-intercept or root, your graph of tangent will have a vertical asymptote. Um, now, I'm about to give you a very, very, very rough graph of tangent. And uh, what tangent's going to look like is uh, <clears throat> you will have vertical asymptotes all over the place. Um, I'll see vertical asymptote, what vertical asymptote. You'll have, you'll have a whole bunch of vertical asymptotes. And then between the vertical asymptotes, you will have um, your graph of tangent, which starts, come on, there, which starts down here. It comes up. And it looks almost like S cubed. So this is your general shape of a tangent graph. Now, it can be flipped and stretched and transformed, but that is your general shape of a tangent graph. And we'll come back um, to looking at that in just a second when we graph tangent. Um, so let's get the actual uh, more accurate graph of tangent. What I put down here is just kind of how it's going to look. But to graph tangent um, in its splendid glory, uh, I am actually going to start by thinking of tangent as sine over cosine. So tangent is sine x over cosine x. <clears throat> uh, and whatever function is on the bottom, this is the one that I'm concerned with. I'm actually going to start by graphing only cosine x. Now, we have done a lot of graphs of cosine, so what I'm going to do is pause the video and I'm going to graph cosine really quick because by now my hope is that you know how to graph cosine. And then I'll unpause it here, and you will have the graph of cosine magically appear on your screen. Boing. See? Told you. Right there. Um, <clears throat> okay, this blue graph right here, this is our graph of cosine x. Now, remember, this is just kind of to help us. Uh, it is not our final graph, but I'm going to use this to help me get the graph of tangent. So after I graph cosine, then my graph of tangent will have vertical asymptotes everywhere cosine hits the x-axis. So all of these points where cosine hits the x-axis is going to be a vertical asymptote. So let's come down and graph all the vertical asymptotes for cosine. Let's see, I'll do them in red. So everywhere, <coughs> everywhere cosine hits the x-axis, I'll have a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote. Everywhere cosine hits the x-axis, we drop in a vertical asymptote. Now that I have the asymptotes, then I go back and I think about the general shape of tangent. And that's what I was giving you right here. Once you have the asymptotes, your tangent is going to look kind of like x cubed, and it's going to pull up and follow those asymptotes. So now that I have the asymptotes, I'm going to come through with my tangent graph. Uh, let's make it a little bit bolder. Uh, and you do hit the x-axis. Tangent's going to hit the x-axis right in the middle of your asymptotes. So my tangent graph is going to start down here. Come up, do a little S thing, and then keep going up. It comes up, does a little S thing, and then comes back up. Tangent comes up, does a little S thing, then goes back up. <coughs> so that is how I'm going to graph tangent, and that's good enough for me. There are a few other points that we could hit to make it more accurate, but if you can get the asymptotes and the general shape of the graph between those asymptotes, then I'm going to be perfectly happy with your tangent graph. And the red graph here is my graph of tangent x. So there's tangent. Let's talk about cotangent. 
Um, well, just like tangent, I'm going to write cotangent as a fraction, which this time it's cosine over sine. And I'm concerned with what's going to make sine equal to zero, because if your denominator is zero, then you have a vertical asymptote. So every time sine x is equal to zero, or you could think about it when sine x has an x-intercept of root, uh, x-intercept or root, then you will have a, ver um, a vertical asymptote for your cotangent graph. Uh, so the general shape of cotangent, it's slightly different than tangent. The cotangent, what it's going to end up looking like is, um, let's see, let me go back to this, get my asymptotes in. Cotangent is going to look something like this. You're going to have t asymptotes just like we did with tangent. But cotangent between the asymptotes, it doesn't go up. Cotangent actually comes down, and it will hit the x-axis right between the asymptotes. Cotangent starts up here, and then it comes down and does this number. Still that kind of S shape, except cotangent comes, as you go left to right, cotangent's decreasing. We're going down. Uh, so that is your general shape of, co of cotangent. And our strategy is simply going to be identify the vertical asymptotes. Then once you have the asymptotes, we'll fill in the cotangent between them. So let's do our uh, good graph of cotangent. Again, we're going to think of cotangent as cosine over sine. You have to remember that identity in order for this technique to work. And I'm going to start by graphing sine x, because that's the one that's on the bottom. You graph the one that's in the denominator. <coughs> and I'm going to pause the video while I graph sine x here. So hang on just a second. There's our sine graph. <coughs> and remember, for sine, this is just something that we're going to think about to help me get our graph of cotangent. And just like with uh, tangent, I'm going to put vertical asymptotes anywhere this base graph of sine hits the x-axis. So all of these x-intercepts right here are going to be um, vertical asymptotes for my cotangent graph. So let me come in and put my vertical asymptotes in. Let me make this dotted, and let's make it red. So I'll put a vertical asymptote everywhere my sine graph hits the x-axis. So we graph sine. Put vertical asymptotes everywhere sine hits the x-axis. Everywhere sine hits the x-axis is a vertical asymptote. Let me move that one over just a little bit. There we go. Um, so there are my vertical asymptotes. And then remember the general shape of cotangent. Once you have those vertical asymptotes, between each asymptote, we go down and make that little S shape. So I'm going to, between each of these asymptotes, I'm going to come down and I will hit my x-axis right in the middle of my vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to hit my x-axis right in the middle, and we're going to come down, follow the asymptote, do the little S thing, and then keep going down. Come down, follow the vertical asymptote, do your S thing, keep going down. Come down, vertical asymptote, S thing, keep going down. And we repeat that. Isn't that fun? I could say that all day long. And that red graph is my graph of cotangent x, which was my objective. The blue graph is just there to kind of help me identify the vertical asymptotes. Oh, goody, announcements. Okay, I hope they make it to guidance. That's pretty important. Um, so you identify the asymptotes and then fill in between the asymptotes your graph of cotangent x. Okay, let's try a couple of a um, little bit more complex examples. Um, where the period and uh, amplitude and things like that change. OK, so let's try a tangent of 2x. I'm going to rewrite this. Tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. Now, since this is tangent of 2x, then it's going to be sine 2x over cosine 2x. You simply turn the tangent into sine over cosine. But then, in order to determine what the graph of tangent 2x looks like, I'm going to graph cosine of 2x, whatever is in the denominator, that's going to be our base that we use to generate the graph of tangent. So let's, in green, graph cosine of 2x. Um, amplitude is 1. And my period is 2 pi over 2. So the period of my cosine graph is going to be 1 pi. Now we're going to use this to graph cosine. I'm going to pause the recording while I graph cosine. And then I'll unpause it, and we'll go there <coughs> to get the go from there to get the graph of tangents. 
There we go. There's our graph of cosine 2x. And I'm going to use this to figure out what my graph of tangent 2x looks like. And I'm going to start by labeling my asymptotes or getting my asymptotes in. So uh, I'll have asymptotes everywhere that my cosine graph hits the x-axis. So I'm going to drop my vertical asymptotes down there. So let's do that real quick. And I like to do my asymptotes in red. Okay, so there's one vertical asymptote. Here's another vertical asymptote. Here's another one. And my last one. I'm going to slide this one over just a little bit. There we go. All right, so there are my asymptotes. And remember, tangent looks kind of like x cubed. The general shape of your tangent graph is coming up like that. So I need to fill in between the asymptotes that shape. So uh, my tangent graph, I'll do it in blue here little bit thick. And remember, you do hit the x-axis right in the middle of the asymptotes. So right in the middle of the asymptotes, we will come up, do our little snake thing, or S thing, and continue going up following the asymptotes. Oh, that was kind of sketchy there. Okay, so there's what our graph of tangents is going to look like. This is y equals the tangent of 2x, and that's in blue. The green cosine graph was just to help us. Uh, you may be thinking this looks exactly like the first tangent graph we did, which is, let me find it, my first tangent graph is right here. And you notice it looks a lot the same. Uh, the difference is how I labeled the x-axis. This one, my asymptotes were at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 right here. But when it was tangent of 2x, my asymptotes ended up being at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So the way you label the x-axis changed, although the graph looks largely the same, uh, the axis is labeled a little bit differently. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, uh, let's try cotangent of x over 3 plus 2. Um, now we are going to shift up 2 here, and when I graph cotangent of x over 3 plus 2, this graph, um, I think cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. So I'm going to change this to cosine of x over 3 over sine of x over 3. And this is going to be the weird part. It's plus 2 on the outside, but what I'm actually going to graph, uh, I do have sine on the bottom. Um, we are going to shift this thing up too. So I'm actually going to graph y is equal to the sine of x over 3 plus 2. And I'm going to graph that and then use that to generate my graph of cotangent. So uh, let me graph that sine graph real quick. Hey, there's something about this graph of sine that I wanted to talk about. Um, we are shifting it up too, and if you remember when I graph my sine and cosine functions, if there's ever a vertical shift, I like to take care of that vertical shift on the front end. So let's do that really quick. Um, I'm going to treat this line right here like my new x-axis. Uh, I know that sine typically looks like this. Um, I know that it starts at the origin, goes up, and finishes a period like that. We're going to start here. Uh, we will count off by 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the tricky part of this one that I wanted to talk about was the period. Um, your coefficient of x in this case is actually 1 over 3. So my period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 third, which ends up being 6 pi. So I know I'm going to finish. I'm going to go up, hit my x-axis. I'm going to come down right here, hit my, I said x-axis, that's the midline. Uh, and I'm going to finish at 6 pi. Now labeling these other ticks is where it gets a little bit tricky because I told you that we will do 6 pi, whatever the period is, and divide it by 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. And that's how big each interval is. So this is going to be 3 pi over 2 right here. And we need to count by that much. Now this is the weird part. It's not just going to be 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 2. Um, what I'm actually going to do, this is 1 of 3 pi over 2. If I go one more, this is another distance of 3 pi over 2 right here to get to my next tick. So this is 3. The next one is actually going to be 6 pi over 2. You count up by whatever the numerator is. So that's 3, 6. The next one would be 9 pi divided by 2. And this one here is, if I go 3 more, that would be 12 pi over 2, which does reduce to 6 pi. Um, so 
Uh, that is how we're going to label this axis 3 over 2, 6 over 2, which reduces to 3 pi. 9 over 2 does not reduce, and 6 pi. Uh, so I just wanted to show you how to count that off when you have a bizarre counting number. Um, so let me pause it and finish graphing my sine graph now. There we go. I just completed my sine graph. Now remember, this green graph is the graph of sine x over 3 plus 2. Now to do the cotangent graph, cotangent is cosine over sine. To do the cotangent graph, we'll put our vertical asymptotes everywhere my sine graph hits the x-axis. So vertical asymptotes are going to go here. So let's get my vertical asymptotes going here. Vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote. And what you need to remember when you start graphing the cotangent graph is we treat that dotted line up at y equals 2. That is the new midline. So it's almost like that's our x-axis. We treat it just like the x-axis. So my graph, I'm going to come in, and I know my graph of cotangent is going to hit my x-axis or my midline right between the asymptotes. And then my cotangent graph starts up high. It snakes and hits that point, and then it finishes going down. Sort of pie, snake, hit that point, finish going down. And we'll follow that pattern all the way across as far as I can. <clears throat> there we go. All right, there was one more I wanted to do. One more. Um, <laughs> do I need to go back? <laughs> Excuse me. Do I need to go back and pause this? you need to pause and look at this for a minute? I don't know. Okay, uh, last one. 2 tangent of x plus pi over 4. Uh, when I graph that, I'm going to think of this as um, that's negative 2, but then my tangent is cosine. No, it isn't. It's sine over cosine. So I'm going to think of this as sine of x plus pi over 4 over cosine of x plus pi over 4. And remember, you, the one you use as your barometer uh, to generate the rest of the graph is the one on bottom. And I'm going to include that negative 2 with it. So what I'm actually going to graph first is negative 2 cosine of x plus pi over 4. And this is going to be one of those evil ones with a horizontal shift. Uh, your period is still nice. The coefficient of x is 1, so my period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1. My amplitude is 2, but it is a negative cosine. Cosine normally starts up high and does a period like this. But when it's a negative cosine, we're going to start down low and actually come up and do its first period in that manner. So let's get this graph of cosine real quick. I'm going to pause it. And here's most of the cosine graph, but what I haven't done yet is we do need to shift my cosine graph to the left, pi over 4. So at this point, all of my x-coordinates, I'm going to move to the left, pi over 4, and I like to do that simply by subtracting my x-coordinates or 0, pi over 2, um, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And we will subtract pi over 4 from each of those to get that shift left. So I'm going to pause while I subtract pi over 4 from each one of those x-coordinates. All right, so I subtracted pi over 4 from each of these, and then we will shift them all to the left. Um, pi over 4. So when I was at an x coordinate of 0, 0 moved to negative pi over 4, which is, I'll put about right here. So that point's going to move to the left just a little bit. Pi over 2, when I subtracted pi over 4, ended up at pi over 4, which is going to be right here. So this point right here is going to move over. And every point's going to move over pi over 4. This one's going to be um, that's 3 pi over 4 going to move that one over, this one's going to move over, and this one's going to move over. And so we finally have this as our tangent graph. We're just going to move it over pi over 4, and that's what our tangent graph now looks like. And we will draw vertical asymptotes and then sketch our cotangent graph, or tangent graph. There are my asymptotes, and uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go on and uh, I'm not going to do any more periods. Tangent, remember, comes up, so we're going to hit right in the middle of the asymptotes. Come up, do a little snaky thing, and uh, and it would continue on out to the left and to the right, but I've 
just to, for the sake of saving time, did not do more periods. So there we go. That was, what, almost 20 minutes? I'm going to dilly-dally for eight more seconds. Let's see. I want exactly 20 minutes. Hmm. Three, two, one, stop.